Yes, Namaskar, very good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, I welcome each one of the participants to this session, uh, which is about reimagining the future of NIPM. We have you know, people from the NIPM and from the industry at large. Uh, so thank you for joining this great session, uh, wherein we have eminent you know, leaders who would be deliberating on the, uh, on the theme for the day. Uh, to start with this session, uh, I would first like to request uh, our uh, chairman of NIPM Delhi NCR chapter, Shri Mukesh Kumar Jain, sir, uh, to kindly, you know, uh, uh, do the welcome address to the gathering. Over to you, Mukesh, sir. Namaskar. A very good morning, friends. And my all my seniors, I, on behalf of the executive committee of NIPM Delhi chapter, welcome you all to this very special panel discussion on enlightening the future of NIPM. I also welcome our national president, Shri Vishweshwar Pulkarni, our past national presidents, Dr. Johari Lal, sir, Dr. A.K. Balyan, sir, our veterans, uh, Shri P. Dwarkanath, sir, Dr. Akil Basrai, sir, Shri R.P. Singh, sir, our future leaders, Mr. M.H. Raja. Friends, uh, we continually ask what results are expected of us whatever our answer to the, that question is to step forward and to take command and responsibility and get the things done. What we need most is positive attitude, more forward thinking, strategic planning that includes leadership succession plan, continuity and consistency in the chapter activities and uh, national as a whole. Professional associations have a very crucial role to play in branding the association, enlightening the member and enriching the profession. Let us think big as the world needs great HR professionals with great vision and great achievements. Each one of us to work hard to build a memorable uh, legacy for our human capital. Tools and techniques adopted by the, uh, our institution to align HR strategy with business strategy, build high performance organization. I am sure our NIP members and guests, other professionals from various uh, uh, bodies will truly be benefited with our deliberation of our eminent uh, panelists. I once again welcome our national president, all the eminent panelists and moderator, and all my seniors, NIPM members and professionals. I wish you a very fruitful day. Namaskar, over to Yashwant. Right, sir. Thank you uh, for uh, sharing your uh, thoughts for the day. Uh, we have with us uh, our, our national president of uh, uh, an IPM, uh, Mr. Vishwesh Kulkarni, sir. Uh, so very warm welcome to the uh, uh, to this August gathering. Uh, Alok, can we have the slide for Mukesh, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Vishwesh Kulkarni, sir? Alok? Yes, uh, so I have the honor and privilege to, uh, to you know, introduce uh, Vishwesh Kulkarni, sir. Uh, so he's the chairman of Yashasvi Group uh, right now, and uh, Yashasvi Group is uh, engaged into the skill development activities technical and management education, implementing the uh, National Employment Enhancement Mission Scheme and the Apprenticeships Program, Pan-India. Uh, they have around 50,000 students uh, who are getting on the job training in more than 600 industries under these schemes. Uh, Yashasvi Group has implemented India's first dual education model, namely Learn and Earn, for which Yashasvi has been awarded as the best skill initiative in India by National Skill Development Agency by the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Government of India. Uh, sir, is currently the national president of NIPM, and uh, I'm also very happy to share with you that uh, uh, Vishwesh Shulkan sir has also been elected for the next tenure of 21-23. Uh, uh, so congratulations to you, sir. Uh, Kulkarni sir is also the member of All India Board of Techni Technician Education, AICTE. He is also the independent member to Minimum Wages Advisory Board, Government of Maharashtra. So very warm welcome to you, sir. Uh, over to you uh, uh, to kindly, you know, share your, uh, 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 your thoughts uh, for the day. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwanji, for this nice introduction. Good morning to all. My sincere thanks to Mr. Mukesh Kumar Jain, Chairman, NIPM Delhi NCR chapter and his entire executive committee member 
for selecting all together different and most needed subject for today's webinar reimagining the future of nipm and inviting most appropriate eminent panel members like dr ak balian dr jawari lal both past national president of nipm mr p dwarkanath dr akil busrai both past national president of nhrdn and our own mr rp singh director hr and legal ifco to moderate the session when we think about reimagining the future of nipm there are two two perspectives which comes in mind one perspective come as a member so as a member of nipm now what i expect what was earlier nipm what was earlier industrial situation what was earlier the hr situation and what is today and what will be the future situation so my expectation as a member i always feel that i should be updated with the latest trend what is happening in the hr functions best practices followed by industries and organization in india and internationally specifically in hr training and other aspect of the hr functions what will be the future challenges and a guidance how i can overcome these challenges being an hr professional i also expect as a nipm member that nipm should support me during my some of the critical uh, time such as when i am facing any industrial relation issue whether i can get the legal uh, protection whether i can get the protection and support from my uh, hr hr fraternity from my uh, surrounding area from my nearby area if i lose a job can nipm and nipm members support me to get uh, some kind of a job or any support for that matter now when i think that i am either i am uh, retired or i am going to pursue my uh, entrepreneurship after completing some of my uh, job and i i wish to do as a uh, consulting so whether nipm can give me some kind of a assignment or nipm can get use of my knowledge and experience as a consultant also what makes me a proud to be an nipm member so what nipm should do to feel that member should get proud of it the other perspective when it comes as a leadership part we feel that the glory of nipm was the pgdpm program which unfortunately which has been now uh, discontinued so how to start this pgdpm program and come into the education mainstream of the hr wherein the hr professionals can be updated with the latest knowledge coming up with the latest wage code bill the nipm is very well uh, recognized and known as a industrialization part we have uh, nhrdn who has been projected as a hrd we have istd which is projected as a learning and training organization likewise now nipm has been projected quite long as a industrialization uh, part of an organization with this coming of labor wage code i think the industrialization will get more importance and the young generation who are not into the uh, ir field they need the guidance for the implementation of this wage code and i think nipm being a senior veteran nipm members they can provide such kind of a guidance and uh, you know some kind of a hand holding to the young hr professionals how to increase the nipm young membership with the diversity i think this is the challenges which leadership team will definitely feel as a academician i always feel that nipm should support me by giving me as a industry exposure so the hr professional from the nearby they should invite the academics the hr faculties they should show them what are the actual hr functions which are really worked out in the industry in the organization and what are the trend what is the latest happening in the hr so that the faculty can go back and uh, to the academics and train the student or make the student into the such a way that what is needed by the industry lastly but definitely not least the movement which is started by nipm to get the chartered status to hr professional in india with the help of nhrd and istd i think each hr professional should contribute into the mission and ensure dream comes true it may take some time i am aware because in india to get this act passed and to get implementation is a tough but i am sure once the movement start rolling out we will become the reality that nipm member will be proud of it 
and definitely in india all the hr professional will get the charter status with this i wish a great knowledge sharing session and today's deliberation will definitely take nipm away forward thank you so much thank you so much uh, vishwesh kurkani sir for sharing your thoughts uh, uh, i believe uh, uh, do we have a mitra sir out here uh, as to mitra sir yeah i think he's not able to join as of now uh, so maybe uh, we will speak to him uh, afterwards uh, yes uh, so i'm happy to share with you that uh, we also have you know uh, mh raja ji who is the uh, honorary uh, secretary elect uh, for the nipm uh, uh, raja sir you are there yes so uh, i would request her yes. uh, yeah i would request uh, raja ji uh, to uh, to kindly you know share his thoughts uh, uh, to the august gathering over to you raj yeah uh, good morning everyone uh, first uh, uh, let me uh, thank uh, all the napm uh, members uh, for electing the uh, new team uh, at the national level as well as at the, at the chapter levels i'm sure that with everyone's support uh, we all will take uh, napm uh, to the greater heights so we all know that uh, business today are experiencing the uh, breakthrough uh, faster than ever the life cycle for innovations are shortening so the innovation and the technologies are the new fuel for not only for the business or for even individuals as well as uh, for the uh, napm as an apm a member uh, i would expect we we embrace the technology uh, so that each and every stakeholder are able to participate so the most uh, uh, appropriate agenda would be uh, for this team we will ensure that the 100% digitalization is uh, taken care my my hearty congratulations to uh, mr uh, mukesh and the delhi team uh, for choosing the excellent uh, uh, topic at appropriate time because now the at a national level as well the chapter level we have a new team in place so today's deliberation we will have an, a clear uh, idea where we are going to head for the next two years so once again uh, hearty congratulations and uh, thank you very much i am also eagerly uh, waiting uh, to hear from the eminent speakers thank you over to you chon uh, yes uh, thank you so much uh, raja sir uh, for sharing your thoughts uh, uh, so uh, i believe you know uh, mukesh sir uh, beta sir is yet to uh, probably join uh, so we no like problem to aap uh, now hand over to shri arpit sure. singh sir right sir so uh, before that you know we will uh, just have the introduction for our esteemed uh, speakers uh, of the panel and also the moderator so alok uh, you are there uh, can you kindly you know, put up the slide for the moderator first yes uh, so i have the privilege and honor to you know uh, uh, to introduce uh, mr rp singh sir uh, who needs no introduction he is the current director hr and legal uh, at ifco which is the indian farmers fertilizer cooperative limited he is also the past chairman of nipm delhi ncr chapter uh, singh sir is a, a veteran ir and hr professional uh, and currently working with ifco which is the largest manufacturer and marketer of fertilizer in the world in the cooperative sector he is also uh, uh, you know handling the board level positions of various uh, joint ventures of ifco in india and abroad uh, sir is uh, has done his uh, post graduation uh, in labor and social welfare from patna university in the year 1975 he started his career in telco now in tata motors at jamshedpur 1975 and worked with british india corporation patna university pirate phosphates and chemical limited during the period from 75 to 1996 he joined uh, in uh, uh, ifco uh, in may 1996 and continues to work with this giant multi state cooperative which has grown under his astute leadership through continuous expansions and diversification during his strong long stint of 45 years in hr ir and legal services he has contributed immensely in the area of corporate policies talent management development employee engagement negotiation uh, with trade unions arbitrations and litigations uh, negotiating mergers and acquisitions setting up jvs etc 
He is widely invested with NHRDN, NIPM, ICA, India CHR Forum. He is also the HR committee member of International Cooperative Alliance and chairman of HR and HR committee of PhD Chamber of Commerce Industry. A very warm welcome to you, sir, uh, uh, who is going to you know uh, moderate the session. Uh, Alok, can we move to the first panel speaker? Yes, uh, so we have uh, a very respected, you know, Dr. Johari Lalsar as our panel speaker, uh, who is the former Director HR ONGC and past National President of National Institute of Personal Management. Uh, sir holds the uh, in Public Administration, Postgraduate Diploma in Labor Law, Welfare and Personal Management. He's also the Doctor of Philosophy in Business Management. Uh, he's an accomplished HR professional and philanthropist. Uh, he has also been awarded fellow on IPM and fellow uh, IMA status uh, with a multifaceted experience of over five decades in oil and gas sector PSUs. He holds a huge and rich in experience, uh, including uh, uh, the experience wherein he spearheaded the ONGC as its director HR uh, for more than 10 years. And he is currently uh, the president of Anugraha Dishidan, which is an NGO, Bal Arogya, and Management and Leadership Development Center. Uh, Dr. Johari Lalsar is an articulate and persuasive professional with demonstrated capability for evolving the HR vision, mission, statements, and enumerating the HR objectives. He's also an author for the book, Ageless Aging, Love, Laugh, and Live Happily, which was released by the president of India, Sri Nath, Ramnath Kovinji. He uh, has also served on the board of ONGC and OIL for almost 14 years. Uh, sir has been awarded Doon Ratna Award uh, along with the General uh, Malik, uh, the then Chief of Army. Uh, and he has also been awarded the Man of Achievement Award in 1999 by International Publishing House. So a very warm welcome to uh, Dr. Johari Lal, sir, uh, for uh, joining the discussion. Uh, can we move to our next speaker? Yes. Uh, so the second panel speaker uh, we have is uh, Dr. A.K. Balian, sir. Uh, uh, Balian sir, very uh, warm welcome to you as well. Uh, uh, Balian sir is the former Managing Director and CEO of Petronet LNG, and he is also the past National President of National Institute of Personal Management. Uh, Dr. Balian is a very senior and experienced professional having 49 years of rich industry experience. He holds an MTech degree from prestigious IIT Delhi and a PhD from uh, Germany. Uh, he's uh, the ex-CEO of oil and gas uh, at Reliance ADAG. And uh, during his tenure in ONGC, Dr. Balyan held senior leadership positions in various subsidies of ONGC, including ONGC Videsh Limited, MRPL, Opal, etc. His contributions have been very well recognized and have been conferred with several awards and accolades, major ones being the Best CEO of the Year Award by Business Today, Corporate Award for Innovative Practices, etc. Uh, Dr. Balian, sir, uh, he's uh, skilled in uh, project development and execution, negotiation, particularly in gas and LNG long-term contracts, uh, operations and management of terminals, petroleum with downstream linkage to petrochemicals. Uh, he's currently serving as the chairman and director of uh, Carmen Energy PT Singapore. Uh, sir is a veteran in the management field, a competent leadership think uh, trainer, and a keynote speaker and a thought leader in various conferences in India and abroad. Uh, a very warm welcome to you, uh, Dr. A.K. Balian, sir, for joining the discussion. Uh, can we move to our next speaker? Yes, uh, so we have uh, a great uh, speaker, uh, uh, Mr. P. Dwarkanath, sir. Uh, he also needs no introduction. Uh, he's the former chairman of GSK Consumer Healthcare Limited. And uh, he has been the past national bachelor president of uh, uh, NHRDN. Uh, Dwarkanath sir has stood with the Max Hu uh, Group Human Capital. He brings in a lot of you know rich and varied experience of nearly five decades. And prior to this, he was the chairman of uh, GSK Consumer Healthcare and Dietary uh, HR and Administration India and South Asia at uh, Glexo Smith Klein. And uh, uh, Dr. Dwarkanath sir, he has also been associated with GSK for close to four decades. So that's a huge, huge experience uh, which he brings. Uh, uh, he's also the member of you know, GSK's international HR team. Uh, sir has held board and advisory positions in various organizations, including in some prestigious in, uh, educational institutions. He has held several management positions in the various professional bodies. To name a few, he has uh, been, as I shared earlier, that uh, the uh, as the national vice, uh, national president of NHRDN, which is the National Human Resources Development Network. Uh, he has also been the president of uh, Delhi Management Association. 
he has been a uh, regional vice president of northern region of all india management association and treasurer of ima uh, dwarkanath sir has won several prestigious awards for his valuable contribution in the field of human resources and people development uh, so a very warm welcome to you uh, dwarkanath sir uh, for joining the discussion can we move on to our uh, last speaker Yes, uh, so I have the uh, uh, pride in welcoming, you know, Dr. Akhil Busrai, sir, uh, who is uh, a CEO of Akhil Busrai Consulting. Sir has been the past national president of uh, NHRDN. Uh, Dr. Akhil Busrai, sir, has a degree in commerce, an MBA in HR, uh, which he did uh, from uh, X-ray Jamshedpur, where he was a gold medalist. Uh, he also has a postgraduate degree in law. And uh, the postgraduate diploma in training development, uh, he was awarded PhD in April 2012. Uh, sir has a, a very uh, rich experience of 49 years plus uh, in, in the industry and consulting domain covering all aspects of HR, including industrial relations, recruitment, training, remuneration, policy, operations, divestment, cross-cultural workforce, and HR uh, shared services. So uh, amazing experience uh, which he brings. Uh, uh, sir is also, has also you know, worked in various HR roles with Blue Star Limited, Unilever in Kenya and India, Motorola in Asia Pacific countries, Shell in Malaysia and IBM in India. Dr. Busrai sir has been actively you know, associated with management movement in India and uh, and he has been the president of uh, Delhi Management Association, vice chairman for AIMA in the northern region. He has uh, he has been on the council or national council of CII, which is Confederation of Indus Industries, uh, ASOCHAM, SHRM, and on the board of several educational institutions and corporates. He was awarded the Pathfinder Award by National HR Network and adjured amongst the most powerful HR professionals in India at the Asia Pacific HRM Summit in Singapore. Sir has worked in all areas of HR from industrial relations to compensation to acquisition to growing the business 15 folds to downsizing. Uh, so fantastic, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Akhil Buswai, sir, is currently uh, serving as the CEO of Akhil Buswai Consulting, offering consulting, executive coaching, HR strategy, leadership development, and training. Uh, a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Akhil Buswai, sir, for joining the discussion. I'm sure with so many, you know, power-packed, uh, eminent leaders joining the discussion, uh, and with RP Singh, sir, as our moderator, we are surely going to have an exciting uh, discussion ahead. Uh, just to, you know, uh, coming back to the topic for the day, which is about rematching the future of NIPM. When we talked about this topic, in fact, in our last AGM, we shared uh, the, you know, uh, our vision for Delhi NCR chapter uh, with the August body uh, during the AGM. Uh, but, uh, you know, subsequently, we also thought that, you know, uh, why uh, can we have, you know, a discussion where we, we can have the leaders, you know, talking about the, uh, the future of NIPM. And, and, uh, and I believe, you know, the challenges are, uh, uh, several and uh, common across, you know, multiple professional organizations like an IPM, an HRD, ISTD, etc. So I'm sure, you know, uh, the panel is going to throw a lot of light on that. Uh, we look forward to uh, uh, to your kind guidance and learning from each one of you. Uh, uh, so with this, I hand it over to uh, uh, R.P. Singh, sir, for kindly taking the uh, session forward. Over to you, R.P. Singh, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you, Yashwan. Let me first... Uh, As Dr. Jauri Lal, Dr. Balyan, E. Dwarkanath, and Akhil Busraiji. Friends, uh, you know, before coming to this session, I thought of visiting an IPM website. Because I just wanted to refresh my memories about the vision and mission of an IPM. And uh, I had forgotten the website address. Sometime in Delhi chapter. And you know what I found? It, there was an advertisement there that this site is for sale. <laughs> and there, there, there is a phone number given there. And it says that can give you the price over phone. So why I'm saying this, then of course I 
visited the site. I went, I googled it and got the National Institute of Personal Management site and saw the uh, vision and mission and all that. What, why I am pointing out this is that this is a very new kind of challenge that every organization is going to face. Cyber theft, cyber attack, and cyber piracy. And even the brand that you have generated can be sold and uncashed by others. So you have to be very alert about these things in today's time. Uh, after having seen the, because I, I was uh, having an idea that perhaps with the changing times, we need to change our vision and mission. But I found that the vision and mission that has been given on the website is quite exclusive and is keeping is in keeping with time. So the vision that is stated there is to be the most valued organization of HR professionals in India and an acclaimed global contributor to HR excellence. So if this vision is to be pursued, I think we need a lot to do. And the mission is creating and sharing new knowledge and insight for business and people and people management, espousing global quality standards for people practices, promoting people development agenda and providing critical support and solutions to business, government and other stakeholders. Now, if we go into the background, when NIPM was, in fact, initially it was IIPM, Indian Institute of Personnel Management, and there was another one, National Institute of NILM. Management. One was in Kolkata, the other was in Mumbai. And these were set up in post-independent India. When the industry was growing very fast, concentration of labor in the <coughs> towns was increasing. The issues relating to a large group of persons working and living at one place were being faced. Exploitation was commonplace. Industrial strikes and conflicts were also coming up very frequently. The state was conscious of these developments and therefore decided to intervene and regulate through the legislations. So the Industrial Disputes Act came into force in 1947 and the Factories Act came into being in 1948, Minimum Wages Act and all that. So there were certain provisions which were to be implemented like welfare officer, canteen, health, safety, and all that. The industrial tribunals, labor courts, all these were to be set up. There was a restriction in the Industrial Disputes Act that advocates cannot appear because it has to have the consent of the trade unions. So all these things helped in developing the profession, developing the uh, a breed of HR professionals. And these professionals felt that there is a need to organize and have a professional body. Uh, I'm happy that two of the past national presidents of this great institution are here with us, Dr. Jauri Lal and Balianji. The other two eminent panelists, Mr. Dwarkanath and Akil Busrai, are known for their tenure as national presidents of National HRD Network, which is relatively newer in the field and, of course, more agile. Uh, the 
field that was available to NIPM in those good old days was without any competition. Like uh, our national president, Mr. Kulkarni said that our diploma, postgraduate diploma program was a flagship program. And this was the main plank of NIPM. Now, if you look today, we find there are hundreds of such programs being run by different institutions. In those days, even universities didn't have, so many universities didn't have the specialized programs on industrial relations and labor management. But today, that is not the case. So we are in an age of stiff competition. Apart from that, the kind of uh, courses and uh, the, the certificates that we provide and the kind of inputs that we give, to my mind, they are also dated. The way things are going on, the way the artificial intelligence and machine learning and whatnot, they have all taken over the past and we are living in a very different world today. So we have to now think and work out some strategy which should be viable and which should be successful in today's context. So in this context, I would request, no, we all the five old people have assembled here today to revive and revitalize an old organization. So our task is very difficult, but uh, I'm sure we have people who have not only led successful organizations as industrial enterprises, but who have also very successfully led professional associations. So we will take advantage of their insight. And uh, I would request, starting from uh, Jori Laji, that they should give a brief view about the whole thing, maybe in about two to three minutes, because we had not taken into account this introductory part, which has taken almost about 30 minutes of our time. So maybe two to three minutes, I would request Mr. Laji to please give his thoughts, initial thoughts, and then we will come up with the questions as we go along. Thank you, Jauri Laji. Aap mute hai, sir. Jauri sir, unmute kar sir. And in the meanwhile, uh, I will make this get another, another device because power has uh, gone off here in my residence. So I am connecting to another device. So meanwhile, Gauri uh, Laji will go on. Huh? Abhi, hey. Hey. Yes, yes. Yes, we can yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, namaskar. Uh, sab, sab se pehle aap sabhi ko, uh, khas karke hamare kulkarni saab, parun kikim ko, बधाई देना चाहता हूं हमारे जो दिल्ली चैप्टर की जो नई टीम आई है उसको बधाई देना चाहता हूं एंड आरपी सिंह साहब जो हमारे मॉडरेटर हैं पहली बात तो उन्होंने हमको नारद बना दिया हमको और खास करके बलियान साहब को यत्त सर्वत बना दिया और हम बैठे हुए हैं ब्रह्म सर्व अब आप भी कभी नारद बनेंगे ऐसी बात नहीं है <laughs> देखिए कि भी अलाउ से ओल्ड टाइमर्स और I don't think that now this is a question of revival. I say this is a question of rejuvenating NIPM. Yes. And uh, gold is gold now. So we have to make it prove that yes, we are gold. Pahli baat ye hai ki Pishla Jub Karim Deer Sal Gya hai really say most of the organizations and people couldn't do much. So now this is time for the NIPM that yes, to compensate for the time we have lost. And since uh, the national president is here, Mr. Kulkarani, uh, most of the time in the organizations, they are top driven. So naturally now he must have made his agenda, agenda for the year, agenda for the two years. And that agenda has to percolate down the line to the chapters level. And they will also get it uh, uh, really activated. During the course of uh, election, kaafi log active ho jate hain. And as soon as the election is over, now 
Dili Salam Ring. But I found Mr. Mukesh Jain. I happen to know him for the last 25 years. And uh, he has been uh, uh, going from strength to strength. And uh, lately, for the last six months, I've seen he has been very, very active. So, we have a lot of expectations from Mr. Mukesh Jain and also his team. जो दो तीन चीजें हमको समझ में आ रही हैं हमारी जो अप्रोच है शुड बी फोर इश्यूज वी शुड हैव नंबर 1 नाउ व्हाट वी हैव व्हाट वी हैव टू ऑफर आप इस सिंह सामने बताया था कि वी शुड हैव समथिंग टू ऑफर सो व्हाट इज देयर वी हैव टू ऑफर ऑफर टू होम टू द कॉर्पोरेट्स ऑफर टू द मैनेजमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट्स एंड ऑफर टू द इंडिविजुअल्स सो नाउ वी हैव टू सेट अवर हाउस एंड ऑर्डर दैट यस when we go to them then then this is what we can give hamara jo approach hai ki at least in the next two years we have to identify 40 to 50 corporates both the public sector private sector multinational jo khasar ke ncr area mein hai so we have to identify this 40 to 50 and then we have to approach them that yes this is an ipm and this is what we can do particularly when you go to them we have to say that what we can offer ki hamare paas kya hai dene ke liye so that is one thing so far hota kya hai ki jab humko confidence honi hai seminar hona hai only then we approach them main time we say we don't approach them abhi kya hai ki physically ja kar ke approach karna hai and luckily we have got senior people like balyan now so we can all go say that and go and meet them so just create a certain identity yes ki we exist same number 2 Say we have to make our presence felt with the institutions, the management is too same. Say the future, the building of our the young managers of tomorrow. So we have to approach them. We have to make them known that there is an IPM that exists, and uh, at least again, forty to fifty, जो में जो institutes हैं, उनको हमने ऐसे approach करना है. Approach in the sense that okay, we have got very senior faculty members here. कि भाई से ऑन वेरी सम टॉपिक जो मॉडर्न टॉपिक पे से से दे कैन गिव अ टॉक द 45 मिनट्स टू 1 आवर दे कैन गिव अ टॉक एंड आल्सो इंसिडेंटली दे कैन आल्सो इंट्रोड्यूस द एनआईपीएम सो दैट इट क्रिएट अवेयरनेस एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल दे हैव कम टू नो एनआईपीएम फ्रॉम दिस स्टूडेंट्स द थर्ड इज अबाउट दिस द इट्स इंडिविजुअल्स द मेंबरशिप हैज नॉट इंक्रीज so these are three prompt is the, the approach we have to do only thing three things are required number one those who have been elected whether at the national level or the delhi chapter level said they have to be have enthusiastic they have to have zeal that they yes they have to do something in next two years their zeal has to be there number two they have to have time yes because this require a time once uh, you have agreed to be get elected then you have to have time that yes that we can give us a time and the third thing they can always uh, approach the seniors uh, so we are all available ki hum log jaise singh sahab ne kaha ki hum log to available hai ya tat sarvat so it is for you to make use of it so we are available in this so i think is briefly this is uh, i will uh, uh, mention this two three points initially thank you jawari lal ji uh, now may i request dr balyan Uh, thank you mr singh and um, first of all congratulations to the national team led by mr kulkarni and i'm sure uh, 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 the coming time they would really do something different and uh, worthwhile uh, carrying the institutions uh, ahead in their and towards the vision and mission what they have been defined also congratulations to mr mukesh Uh, for the ncr team new team and very vibrant team we have been seeing a lot of actions by mr mukesh and i hope this this trend continues um thank you very much uh, singh saab and uh, it is a uh, really a, a pleasure and, and a privilege to be part of this uh, uh, august panelists forum you know uh, we have some very senior people here so thank you very much uh, for making me a part of that when we talk about an ipm um, uh, there are some very fine things that we can talk about and there are of course not so good things also that we need we need to talk about to really uh, if we are really feeling uh, something uh, good 
and need to do something good for the organization. It's a great organization, a very illustrious uh, history. Uh, two great organizations coming together and forming uh, um, NIPM. Um, now, over the period of uh, time of four or five decades, uh, we know things have changed totally. Um, the, the way of functioning has gone, the way of business, uh, how it is conducted is gone, the entire environment has changed. Um, uh, we feel that while the vision and mission are, are okay, I think the way to really reach that uh, vision and mission, that needs to be changed. And we all know that uh, nothing uh, really goes well unless we really change. Change is a very important thing. And um, we have in the management also learned that uh, it's a constant change. And now we talk about either change or perish. So I think we need to really take a, and do introspection, whether we are really uh, moving ahead on the same direction. To my mind, few things uh, are very important. Uh, we need to undertake a SWOT analysis of the Institute. SWOT analysis um, to really a comprehensive study, what all we have been able to reach our targets, if not, why we have not do, what, where are the flaws, and then pick up uh, fill up those gaps and, and flaws to really move ahead quickly. Um, another point to my mind is uh, any institutions has to grow with the younger generation. I think this character of NIPM uh, needs a change with uh, a, a, a very, very uh, comprehensive and major thrust to induct younger people into this. And to my mind, uh, um, Jari Lal Saab also said that we, we all four or five older people are looking at changing older organization. I think we should have a team of youngsters actually to really talk about how do you change this whole old organization. I think that's very important. So I think induction of a fresh thinking, fresh blood, and, and also a lot of people in that, not just... Uh, um, you know, at the chapter level. I think if we make changes, how the organization need to be uh, driven, where the decisions are being made, the younger blood has to be there also. So I'm talking right from the top leadership to the down to the each chapter, there has to be a representation of younger blood in the decision making. And also they should ask question, why one should join an IPM? If you ask that question, I think many of the things would be perhaps addressed. There are several choices for a youngster today to join other professional organizations, but there are certainly certain advantages to join an IPM. I'm a I'm very strong supporter of an IPM on that. But then why we should be joining it? this question, why it should be a preferred uh, professional institutions? Um, do you really have that knowledge base to share on that? Are we really agile enough to bring out a change? Are we really a technology and, uh, uh, you know, the digitized uh, organization to work on this? Do we have uh, experts available for younger people to function as coaches or mentors? Do we have experienced people available to guide professionals and youngsters into that? Uh, do we undertake research work where people look at futuristic trends on that? Um, is there any transparency and honesty in working with the organization? This is, a, to my mind, a prime first point for any youngsters when they look to an organization. Transparency and honesty. I think it should percolate into every action, which to my mind right now is not to a desired level. Why we should be able to share uh, joy and happiness to a youngster, why he should join. If he feels really happy and join to this thing, our purpose is served on that. So I think we need to really take a holistic uh, uh, approach and ask very difficult and straightforward, blunt questions to us. I mean, I think as, as you're, you're taking our opinion and views on that as, a, as an elder, I think every leadership in an IPM has done some contribution to that, but may not be enough actually. And today's time requires a 
a, a whole lot of different work and a faster work and, and a different style also. And maybe a more comprehensive changes are needed now in the organization. So how the leadership is actually going to uh, really undertake uh, this thing? To my mind, uh, one must build a good national body, which is knowledgeable, which is qualified, which has the expertise in that. And we are looking at strategic leadership at the top level, not just as a leader, strategic le uh, leadership to really drive the organization uh, uh, forward. Number two, a very strong ethic and integrity. This is very important. As I said, the youngster people, younger generation will only join when they have assurance of transparency, honesty, strong ethic based and integrity into this. We should also have clear roles and responsibilities uh, defined how the people will work. And I think one of the very important thing to my mind is how do you evaluate the performance? Is there any process within the NIPM to really um, check, evaluate own performance, whether at the, 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 the leadership at, the, at uh, chapter level or national level or, 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 the, or the responsibility that is given to some of the committees and all? How has been their performance? I think we should bring it out, this thing. It has to be an accountability and performance together. And we need to be very blunt, as I said. There may be unpleasant um, uh, decisions to be taken, but then in the interest of the organization, there is no harm in taking that. And I'm, I'm sure the, the leadership is really capable of doing that. One of the very important aspect to my mind is a reputational risk, actually. And to my mind, an IPM must be uh, conscious of the reputational risk and should do... Um, utmost to address this issue of that. Well, there are many other things we can talk, uh, Mr. Singh. Uh, I think the positive time, I think I would also like to listen to my other panelists. Thank you very much for giving. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Dwarka is new. Yeah. So all that you have heard so far from the stalwarts who have handled NIPM, headed NIPM, and work inside out with an IPM. Dwarka also has in the past been associated, maybe even today he's associated, but he has a very different kind of experience of handling a very successful organization called National HRD Network. And uh, today we are facing competition, a stiff competition at that from NHRD. Dr. Kulkarni Saab rightly said that in the past, NIPM has been identified with industrial relations. HRD network is identified. Sorry. NIPM is associated with industrial relations, NHRD with development work and uh, with the uh, human resource related software aspects and ISTD with learning and development. But I'm afraid the time is not far when all the organizations will focus on the areas which are going to be addressed in the current scenario. So we would like to hear Dwarka on this. Dwarka Nadji. Uh, Namaskar. Uh, at the outset, I wish to thank NIPM Delhi chapter for inviting me here. I totally echo what Dr. Balian has said. Uh, I'm really privileged and honored to be in this August panel. Uh, and uh, at the outset, my heart congratulations to Mr. Kulkarni and his team, and also to Mr. Mukesh Jain uh, and his team for the Delhi chapter. Um, uh, Mr. S Mr. Singh, I would like to say that I don't see NHRD is competing with the NIP, number one. Uh, I think, you know, uh, the time has come. We need to collaborate and work together. Yes. Uh, I am a permanent member of a life member of NIPM for several years and also ISTD and also NHRD. 
and during Mr. Jawhari Lal's, Dr. Jawhari Lal's uh, tenure and uh, Dr. Balian's tenure, I was also actively involved. And now, um, thanks to Mr. Mukesh Jain, I have revitalized myself. I think a <laughs> lot has been said. Lot has been said by the two uh, earlier panelists who have got more knowledge and wisdom and the way NIPM operates. I am trying to give more uh, outside in perspective. I just want to, at the cost of repetition, I would like to reiterate: if you want to really succeed as a professional body, as said it earlier, I'm not saying something different. You should be proud of your pedigree and heritage. I think if you are to realize this has been said, NIPM is today what it stands, which is a merger of two entities formed in 48, 1948, IIPM and Neelam in 1950. He is in existence for more than 73 years now today in India, which is the oldest professional body. So first, let us feel proud that we can deliver something which can add value to the, all the stakeholders. I think what I want to say is, yes, it is, you can call now, how do you make an institution? It should not be a professional association run by few individuals where some leaders are active during that time, it will flourish and some people are not active, then it will sink. That should not be the case, especially with a prestigious institution with high pedigree of NIPM. So it is a rebranding you call, revitalizing or regenerating as Dr. Jawalilal said, a time has come. This is a wake up call to all the professionals of members of NIPM. Yes, this is a great institution, but how do you build institution? Institution is not built alone by only few individuals. It has to be collective effort of everyone. So. As rightly said earlier about Dr. Balian, since the national president is also here, tone at the top is very important. If you set the tone, if you are role model, if you follow the processes, be transparent, be democratic in your approach, then things, first, if you establish the robot processes, then things will flow. It should flow from the national to the chapters. That is what has been done in NHRDN, which is much um, younger. I'm saying no organization is perfectly 10, 10 out of 10. They always have some challenges which will continue. That is a dynamic process. But I think it's important. We have gone through different phases in NHRDN. At some stage, because of lack of a vision uh, or a dynamism of the leadership, it was sliding. Then people have come back in the early 2000s and revitalized it. And as Dr. Balian said, I totally said, do you have a robust governance structure? I think, you know, it's very important. You have to run the professional body, all being the being senior or a young leaders. You should run like a company. You should be not only accountable, deliver what you promise. Don't over promise and under deliver, but you, you should be able to do and my suggestion to start with, when you're rebranding or revitalizing, please form a think tank. Form a think tank. I would strongly urge, you know, I'm not saying I'm grateful today I've been in the August company, but all the five, including the moderator or senior citizen club, <laughs> I wish you have one, after, one after challenging us or giving some dynamics and some gender diversity. I mean, I'm not only saying gender, it's age, gender, thought process, revitalizing. Why can't we call an academician? I mean, I think, you know, I think it's, I, it's fine. It's a good beginning, but I would suggest create a think tank and give a very diverse people, include them. And I think we need to include maybe some students as well. I think if you're saying the value proposition, why should I join NIPM? Number one question. What is it add value to me personally, professionally? What is the satisfaction I get? How do you feel I'm proud to be associated with NIPM? Like chartered accountant, chartered secretary. I mean, how do you chartered engineering? How do you do that? I think, you know, it's a step. If NIPM can't do it, I'm afraid the other institutions are much behind. You have a big cloud and follow up. And secondly, I agree, you need to focus on corporate membership, individual membership. 
but numbers alone is not enough it is the quality of participation and members you have you may have 100 people but you may be able to participate today we have only 34 people for this um, chapter i'm sure with mr mukesh jain dynamism next time you hold it it will be more than 100 i think you know that participation is important the quality of contributions is very important the uh, the other bit which i want to say strategic collaboration i think you know coming from a gsk we could have never collaborated with our especially in pharma which is a very very confidential data and all that for research and so on i don't think would i ever collaborated with sanofi to 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 make a vaccine now even so called competitors are collaborating you have a bandwidth you have the competence you have people at different levels please collaborate with uh, uh, nip collaborate with istd nhrd imr cii fiki scope there are many other organizations which you do it and before i conclude i have two more points very quickly it, it's not only just be a silo as a only as a hr professional i think this is where when i said diverse and inclusive it is not only gender age but also bring in the business leaders line managers because they are also deal with the people processes i think you know that's one aspect we have to bear in mind and uh, you know if i to if i to say all this can happen especially changing times even last two years things have changed we need to proactively think the best way to predict future is to create it so in order to say that uh, if i want to create a future how do you create that future strategically focus on few things have some quick wins and involve business leaders line managers but have a diversified groups have a think tank as dr balian sub said you have a swot based on swot what you do is very important if you don't keep scoring you are just practicing i think you know the output is also important you are accountable at last but not the least is a quick win develop a product i am just going through it when i have called for it i i have a book issued by indian institute of personal management uh, which calls personal management in india it was it was edited in printed in 1961 i have a copy of 1973 if i today i have any reference to labor associations ilo conventions anything i refer to this book this is still a bible to me so i think you know you can create different ones so digital adaptation in the yes. nature of work worker and workforce is doing is different so these are my top line comments think focus strategy focus on few things have a good measurements and be a inclusive and diversify with a transparent what is it for students what is for professional managers what is for academicians and what is for faculty members this is more my top line comments thank you very much thank you thank you darga that's really wonderful uh, now we have the gold medalist with us akil <coughs> thank you thank you rp uh, first of all uh, dr kulkarni and team congratulations on your uh, win for the future of leading till 2023 mukesh bhai congratulation to you and your team also and thank you for inviting me Uh, to meet uh, senior colleagues like uh, Jori Lal Saab and Balyan Saab and uh, friends like Dwarka Garu, uh, um, it's a privilege to be here. I'm not saying out of formality, but it is. In IPM, I mean, when we were bachas in our career, we were very proud of IIPM membership. And I'm talking about Jori Saab. This is about late '60s and early '70s when we were just about entering the profession. and ipm was like the body to go to now what rp mentioned is true that there was nobody else there no select organized body but that was not the reason iipm stood for and balian sir mentioned about three four times there was a good reason is very careful thinker to mention integrity process governance etc was very transparent over a period of time and since i am a member of the family of nipm i will take the liberty to say my views candidly over a period of time we have lost that sharp image that we had 
uh, we are perceived rightly or wrongly as one of those old people's club. Dr. Mm -hmm. Garu mentioned about five of us um, <laughs> representing <laughs> not only in age, but also thinking. Not that we are like that, but at least we are perceived to be like that. Second, it got branded as a bureaucratic organization. <clears throat> You know, like even the conferences are held with a lot of set precedents and who should be invited, who, etc. I'm not saying it's wrong, but there is a perception. And why that perception needs to change is that if you want to rediscover an IPM in the minds of people, you've got to rebrand yourself. I spent half my life with Unilever. And the same Lux and same Surf was rebranded every couple of years. Dr. Garu, if you remember, um, you know, new Lux. And, you know, instead of Hema Malini's face, it was Deepika Padukone's face. Um, but that was not the gimmick. There were certain efforts made to revive, to be with the time. And that is where the stature of NIPM has to be brought back. What are we famous for at one time? And I would not go to the extent extent of saying that throw everything away, uh, all the ideas and senior ideas, etc. But to make sure that we are revitalizing by using a combination of change way of working digital and leveraging the younger population. And I'll come to that part. But RP, coming to your point, you mentioned and Dwarka Garu also uh, noticed that uh, we are not competing. But I take your point, sir. There is a perception of competition. And Dr. Valyan, if you remember 2007, uh, I was the president of National HRD Network and we had a conference in Calcutta. Dr. Kalam was the uh, uh, chief guest. And the impression that time was HRDN is a new network, fancy thinkers, multinational. Uh, uh, the HRD, NHRD, uh, uh, NIPM is a solid body of good, solid citizens and who are serious professionals. This was the impression. And they and we. I remember do inviting Dr. Balyan for the inaugural session to sit along with us on the dais for the start point. And both of us knew each other, so we were uh, exchanging greetings and being camaraderie, and people noticed that however small the gesture is, that if leaders of these two organizations are having that bonhomie, Dr. Balyan reciprocated by inviting me to a validatory address for an IPM in Baroda. And at the tea break after that, we, we heard people say that, oh, a wrong impression, like a journey at work at, at IPM is competing. I think this is an important point. And Dwarka Garu very rightly mentioned, collaboration with others is more critical than only identifying ourselves. Uh, rediscovering identity doesn't happen just because we wish it or we write down a vision statement or um, mission statement. Something has to be implemented. And there are two suggestions I would give here. One, that use a task force approach. And we found this very useful in HRD Network also, that the leadership team should not decide only to articulate what changes we want, but a small task force of people who are either knowledgeable or passionate about subject and implement. It may be four or five task force on different subjects that leadership chooses, but action must be seen because once people see action, they get regenerated and the younger generation feels that something is happening. So the task force approach is uh, very, very important, but that is where senior people in an IPM should actually give time to mentor them. Not just leave it to them and delegate them the gap, youngsters ribbon I think that mindset has to change. Youngsters should be made to work hard. We enjoyed it when we were you're still enjoying it, but they must be guided and mentored, not guided from dictating point of view, but guided. That whole idea our presence must be felt in industry in a new way. It must be felt. Uh, we have lost that glory of the past and we can't just say we were one time very famous. So the, to do that, my last suggestion is don't wait for evolution. Make some very abrupt changes, abrupt. 
and Dr. Kulkarni and team and Mukesh Bhai and your team uh, take on some major initiative, one or two, not too many, but make immediate change. Let the shake-up happen to people to say that something is happening, changes in the pipeline. I think that revitalizes organization. If you just will plan with a three-year plan, two-year plan, or in my tenure or somebody's tenure, people will not get excited. Do something, do it fast, make task force, make them accountable, spend little time mentoring them, don't guide them, and make a make lot of mistakes. And what mistakes can we make into this time? But if we do this, we'll bring about a change which is visible. And once the change is visible, the acceleration of the process will take place. So RPL, a specific suggestion, I'll take it later on in, during your question answer, sir. Over to you. Thank you. I, I think uh, we had a very thought-provoking discussion and uh, very important aspect that Dwarka said is that we need to diversify and we need to widen our collaboration and horizon. We have to have certain uh, interactions with the industry as well as the academia. Perhaps in that field, we have not uh, taken uh, much step. So I think we had planned for, uh, you know, five minutes, but it's already 1237. My uh, immediate challenge that I was facing is how to inculcate the feeling of commitment among the members. It is true that NIPM and NHRDN and ISTD may not be competing in the true sense of the term. But the point is that when there are options available for the members or would-be members, then they would definitely like to weigh where does the balance of convenience lies insofar as the value proposition or the advantage that they get, the professional enhancement that they can get. So from that point of view, yes, there is a competition despite collaboration that we might be thinking there has to always to be competition. We have to have a collaborative competitor because we have to learn the good things of our competitors. And at the same time, we also have to have a very collaborative approach. If we were able to be really dividing the line that this area will be covered by this institution, this area will be covered by that institution, then perhaps the things would be much easier. Yeah, the camera is just but I don't think that is going to happen. It will also depend upon the individual leaders and the leaders sometimes, you know, are more ambitious in one association or one institution than another. So right now, my, I mean, as far as the purpose is concerned an organization for that matter is it thrives if there is a purpose for it. It is driven by a purpose. That purpose is there. Then we need to have a good leader. Fortunately for us, Mr. Kulkarni has got a second tenure and whatever he had to learn about the organization that he has done in the previous tenure. Now he is here for another two years. And this is the best opportunity when we can take advantage of the leadership and do something. The question then comes of resources and strategy. How do we generate resources? And what strategy do we adopt? So on this aspect, I would request Dr. Johari Lalji to give his views as to how do we generate resources? Atvi, I don't think uh, there is a, a big issue about the resources. Uh, resources are there. 
Only the issue is how do we mobilize? Very unfortunately, uh, Delhi chapter, as you know, you are one person uh, who made it very active. It was dormant for many, many years. About eight, 10 years, the chapter like Delhi, it was dormant. So now it was revived over a period of time. Now again, two factors have contributed. One is this uh, pandemic. It has contributed last, uh, I think about 18 months or so. Uh, the things didn't move it. Now this time that, okay, how do we move it? So the when we talk of the financial resources, are we talk of the talented or experiences? So for Delhi is concerned, or even at the national level, so these resources are available. Only thing, how do we mobilize it? One thing is that uh, this uh, the point which I raised uh, was also mentioned by other uh, um, speakers that uh, many times uh, so it has to penetrate so from the top. And now we have got uh, Mr. Kulkarni, he's a versatile leader. Uh, so there is no doubt about his, about uh, the leadership, about his um, contribution uh, at the national level, uh, at the corporate level. Now, see, th this has to be vibrant. And very unfortunately, over a period of time, now the visibility of NIPM has gone down. It's not visible. There was a time, yes, uh, because I'm also the member of, uh, live member of uh, uh, HRD Network, also the ICD live member. And 1976, uh, uh, I'm with this IPA, 76, I was a member. So I've been seeing uh, all these allegations. But so what has happened? It has got its past glory. There's no doubt about it. But the young generation, they are not aware what was an IPM, what is past glory. They see what today, what is today. So the most important is that, yes, see this, uh, th th we were known as for IR uh, experts, organization uh, who is having expertise in IR area, but over a period of time, the IR which was there for 20 years back or 30 years back, now it has undergone uh, the entire change. IR scenario which was there about 30 years back, now it has undergone change. So naturally we have to also the, the bring the change in our own con con uh, concept and uh, conceptualization. So I think uh, what the, the prominent uh, the speakers they have mentioned, number of ideas have come. Now the question is how do we concretize this? Luckily we have got some Education is also your teachers who are ahead on Kakami about Kanaka from the Batabot Kazakim. Now it is for the Mr. Jain and his team, and for Mr. Pulkania's team. How do we concretize the ideas there? So, see, see, the number of issues I've mentioned, but how to be put it together? Because uh, now they have to give the result, as Mr. Balian mentioned, the accountability at the end of the day. So I say, I say, keep. Akil Saab hai, unho ne kaha tha ki bhi thik hum dhoo ka ye hai. Iske baad what is the what what do you get out of this? The webinar aap kare dead ghanta apne lagaya hai. So so what do we get out of it? What is the see the the masses, the concrete masses and the action plan? This has to be created. So I think. Uh, 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 two, three things more, say what has mentioned is, uh, uh, again, I will give a stress that what an IPM has to give to the, the people. And that is very important. It is a marketing strategy. Say, as mentioned about the strategies. So this is, again, is a marketing strategy. People understand with that is. So when we go to the market, when we go to the corporate, when we go to the institutions, when we go to the individuals, what is there to offer? So we Thank have you, to have, we have to have certain things that okay, this is what we are offering. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I think Dr. Balian has very rightly said that we have to do the SWOT analysis. That of course is something that we cannot do it here today. Of course, some of the issues that we have pointed out, some of the strengths, some of the challenges, and some of the opportunities that I am sure 
the present body has taken note of it and they'll sit together and do the SWOT analysis. But the important aspect that you have said is transparency and honesty and asking very difficult questions to ourselves. So what, what, what would you like the NIPM body to really be asking itself? What kind of uh, questions do come to your mind? Sir, up mute hai. Mute hai, sir. Balyan, sir. Well, I think there are uh, several things, whole lot of uh, things on that, but I think uh, one of the most important thing would be the governance of the organization. I'm, I'm very uh, putting some uh, emphasis on that because uh, not only the implementation of policies, the mood of the top management, participation of other people in that uh, uh, this thing uh, flows from the top. And therefore, it is very important how the top decision-making body of the organization functions, how quick it is in decision-making, how quick it is in response giving to initiatives, how it is based on strong ethics and integrity. I think that's very important. And once you have uh, defined roles and responsibility, it comes with accountability. <laughs> so I think there uh, it defines on that. Uh, but I think overall for an organization, I have uh, three important aspects that I think any organization has to uh, look into. Number one is of course, undoubtedly the leadership. So leadership means that you must, there is a need to lead from the front on the, on the, on the basis of the vision and mission that you have made your action plan, the agenda, uh, a long-term agenda. And the agenda should not be just for two years to my mind. You cannot really make an organization grow if it's just on a two-year agenda. It has to be a long-term agenda. You must have fixed a target that where the organization should reach in maybe five years, 10 years from now. Develop a perspective plan. And in that perspective plan, the management, the present leadership should, should see that in these two years, we will achieve these milestones. So that's very important. Lead with compassion, lead with positive attitude, and it should be inspiring. You must inspire other chapters and all to really be uh, working in the same style. The second aspect to my mind is engagement. How do you engage your own members? That's a big problem in an IPM actually. There are chapters who, are, who don't respond at all. We are more than 50 chapters. What do you do with the chapter? You, you, one should not carry on the legacy or that luggage which is uh, absolutely not interested or has uh, lost interest or is not there or whatever it is, uh, they have other interests. So I think we should be very clear that if they are not interested, please, thank you very much. And, and you, you severe your relationship there. You can't just continue on that and say we have 50 chapters and we have so many, no. If you really are clear in talking with, with on, on ethics and integrity and honesty, transparency, out of 10,000, 20,000 membership, you say we have just 5,000. These are the members who really care for the organization. They participate in everything and they mean uh, uh, the, the organization should grow. So engage them, bring in more other uh, people into engagement fresh people engagement, engage with other stakeholders like government, local, um, academics. Um, uh, Dr. talked about think tank. I think 2007, eight, we made a think tank. We had three people from academia as well on that, including Professor Pritam Singh himself. I requested him to come on that. And I found it to be very, very useful actually. Now that think tank can give some suggestions which uh, may be difficult, but then it, are, it is in the interest of the organization. So I think you must engage with people and stakeholders who can really add value to the organization. And the third thing is communication. There are large number of numbers who do not communicate with the central leadership. 
or the head office there what is the purpose of that actually communicate with them so that they remain active they remain participative in your organization and uh they 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 are you have a chance to remove any misinformation that is coming up it, it is a both way communication actually so communicate with those uh people uh, uh, uh give the right information latest information and remove the mis uh, uh, information so i think with that um and 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 i said with the more responsibility being on the leadership uh and everybody is seeing at the leadership and they are seeing how transparent is the decision making how transparent is the fund utilization and let me say when you talking about resources no organization is really in problem as far as resources are concerned they are all into positives and they can remain positive because no organization or or sponsor will hesitate to be a part of a good conference vibrant conference where you have really knowledge coming in there so i think those issues are not a problem here i think the organization really need to introspect and make an action plan for themselves that while it is a long term perspective of 5 year 10 years 2 years we must achieve this transparently not just what the just the top leadership for us but it's a, it has to be a democratized way of working that's very important for any organization to grow otherwise it will remain like this thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you, thank you. one very important point that dwarka has said is that any institution to be successful it is not be individual driven it should be driven by strong processes and governance structure i think to be very honest nipm is lacking in this area and this is more important in case of organizations which are tenure based i mean leadership is tenure based and based on outcome of elections so how do you think that should we have uh, dwarka this is for you that how can we have a set structure that would i mean even follow uh, after the change in leadership that would continue to be the governing uh, instrument or the institution uh, th thank you api is a is a great question i think um, something has already been said by dr balian but based on my what i said earlier as a top line comment i would like to reinforce for me if an org if an institution is an se institution is to be really be considered as an acclaimed global leader that's what the uh, vision of the Uh, NIPM says uh, you to have in excellence. I think it's important. Tone at the top is important. Uh, you need to have good leaders, but one leader is not enough. For a bunch of leaders is not enough to sustain. Sometimes during particular period, I'm just giving you as an instance. During yes. Dr. Jawhari Lal's time, it flourishes. Dr. Balian's time is flourishes. Some other times also would have flourished because I was more interacting with them at that time. and i participated and they participated in many of the events as akil said but i think it's an institution in the sense i mean it's my suggestion based on iim you know because where i'm involved as a council member and a treasurer and so many positions for 25 years you know 20 before that it is not that i have done it is a collective thing it was a struggle to even manage the funds for for staff expenses in 95 you know when i took over treasurer of this this we were struggling how could this happen there are great leaders visionaries they are great teams i think you need to have a leaders you need to have a team but created an infrastructure which is running the show we instance ci you know we, there are best examples in india they are running for it it is not one or it is not ongc it is not gsk it's not motorola or ifco or it is it is a collective wisdom but create an institution which is robust you touched up on the point how transparent the elections are number one then you know why do you wait for the agm to raise questions 
on the processes procedures if you have in a more digitalized world you can have a feedback if you ask me one suggestion i have to give you first take a dipstick survey i know if you have 100 people only 20 people participate doesn't matter they are the people who are passionate about it want to bring changes listen to them it doesn't mean whatever everybody says you have to follow but you get an idea we get a feedback then you create a think tank i think sometimes you can create great strategies but i think if you want to do it how do you record the minutes how do you maintain your accounts i would say run nipm like a good corporate quarterly yes. meetings minutes properly recorded circulated this is a digital world and you don't have to wait to ratify the agm for 12 months to come into next meeting and then people raise and it will become a very very um, antagonized way of doing it rather than a constructive way create that confidence i think akil bhai has said perceptions are important uh, yeah. dr balian said visibility is important be transparent open it, you can't say i'm transparent open unless you as has been said communicate communicate on a timely basis take take the feedback accept constructive feedback act on it and the last but not the least at the cost of reputation he said run like a corporate uh, institution and if you run like this create a strong secretariat i think you know even if you are two yes. or three i mean cii and imr today and fiki and all run by the secretariat leaders come and add value to it bring resources marshal the um, existing uh, structures but they will not uh, tinker with the processes because the processes are very robust this yes. is what first uh, focus on processes establish transparency and communication you digitalization and be inclusive I, i at the cost of reputation i said bring some uh, mentors and coaches not only from hr paternity bring from the business and cx was so that you know you get a diverse view today's hr is spread over all over the place it's a how do you add a value as a nipm member be it a student be it a academician be it a professional is something we should aim and you should uh, if you don't keep scoring you are just practicing i think like a company you have a kras at the beginning of the year these are the kras circulated and then keep on giving progress score card at quarterly basis thank you thank you thank you very valuable suggestions so akil bhai you suggested we need to make some abrupt changes uh, any thoughts about it Well, I'll be. <clears throat> it is an extension of what we just heard from Dorka Garu and Balian Sir. The leadership from now on, what is the perception has to be broken that we are very bureaucratic. It only works from the top till the top knows nothing will happen. If somebody at the top doesn't agree, nothing will happen. I think if we have to break that notion. That this is, and I like the word Balian Sir used, democratize the whole process. And I'm not being theoretical. youngsters have to feel that they have a say in the matter and that can only happen if they are allowed to implement i think the leadership role should be lay a overall big direction that this is where we are going in two years and and dwarka garu's last idea um, uh, you know have goals and report on it i've done it or not done it partly green use red light uh, signals red green uh, yellow but the idea is that leadership should not feel is a power center at the top that we will approve everything must come to us one different view i have rp from what we have heard from my senior colleagues do not centralize yes on on the contrary empower chapters let chapters be empowered let leadership support them facilitate them and and give them all the support but let the chapters run it is in long run that is the sustainable model if we centralize we have seen in another organization where it becomes a hierarchical bureaucratic stuff and the members lose interest what is good for ahmedabad people in ahmedabad know better what is good for trichy people in trichy know better let them run sitting at the top 
give them all the help to become successful. And collectively, all the chapters, when they become good, you will see NIPM changing. And coming to your point about abrupt, why I feel abrupt uh, change is important, do something and show rather than say we will do it. Now, one of the things we'll do by 15 October is this. Now, people say, what is a hurry? That is the hurry to send the message that we mean business now. Yes. It may be a small thing, but do it. And in cumulative of doing small, small acts immediately will revitalize the organization's speed response. Youngsters will feel, okay, things are changing. And now that Dr. Kulkarni and his team is taking a new term, this is not no better time than to say Sri Ganesh now. Yes. <laughs> and thank you, thank you. Uh, and the good thing is that for us, that there are some young bloods also in the newly elected body. Our secretary is young. Delhi chapter secretary is also young. National secretary is also young. And I think they will infuse youth and experience in the chapter. We have been uh, discussing about uh, these things. RP, RP one point. Uh, sir. RP? Yes, sir. See, I think uh, just I want to clarify the confusion uh, should not go that uh, the NIPM, the each chapter is independent to say, do whatever they want to do. They oh, have yes, sir, that know. There, that is, know. there is no binding. I and it's not that, okay, there is a uh, very um, uh, democratic and uh, that okay, something come from the top, only they will do. You see the chapters in South, they are doing very, very well. For the last so many years, Mysore chapter, our Bangalore chapter, our Kerala chapter, or even Chennai chapter. Now, because they have been taking initiative, they're doing. There is no binding that token. Okay, there is no question we'll ask. Just like this, if you don't do, they will not ask any question. If you do, they will not ask why you're doing. Your so that thing is there. Taken, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. It is for the individual, individual chapter to take initiative. Right, right, right. And, and the sky is the limit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we have been discussing amongst ourselves. I think it's time now that the participants also have they are saying, if they are to ask any questions, we'll most welcome it. We also have a few academicians here, the very eminent professor. So if anyone of you would like to give your views, you are most welcome. We have only 10 minutes. And in those 10 minutes, we have to finish the question answer and also the, any views to be expressed by any of the academy. So stage is open. Yes, one, you will be regulating. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Thank you so much uh, for a wonderful, wonderful, uh, you know, insights by all the eminent leaders uh, and for the wonderful moderation. Uh, I would request the audience to, you know, uh, kindly raise the question and give you uh, want to ask a live question, you can raise the hand or uh, else I'll just quickly, you know, uh, take one question uh, right now, uh, uh, which is from Madan MS, sir. Uh, uh, he's asking that... Uh, that uh, I agree the, uh, uh, with the panel that regarding the letting chapters run independently, but evaluate the chapter leadership. Are they actually competent or are they following their own personal agenda? So any your uh, any take on that, sir? I think, uh, you see, evaluating the leadership of the chapter perhaps may not be within the domain of the uh, even national office, because if you go by the constitution, Fortunately or unfortunately, we are governed by the public opinion. And if someone has been elected for some time, he has been elected. I have seen the constitution. There is no provision for expulsion or removal of such leaders who have won the election but are not performing. Whether that kind of an enabling provision should be brought into the constitution or not, that is for the national body to ponder over in consultation with the chapters. Uh, but the most important aspect that Varka has said is that if you set a robust process and a structure 
and you have a regular secretariat, then perhaps even the elected chapter leaders, whether weak or strong, something or the other they will be bound to do because of the process set in motion and because of the structure provided for. So I think we'll have to, for the time being, go for that. But yes, this is a good suggestion and we will see how far it is implementable. So there is a process yes, of uh, there is a process of evaluation of the chapter performance. So yeah, that is from reality. Yes. So yes, there is this chapters performance are evaluated, and uh, the chapters are awarded uh, Award, during yeah. our national conference. But if someone is not interested in getting awarded, and someone <laughs> has come only for pursuing his own personal agenda, then perhaps that that doesn't work. So. Thanks, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for your inputs. Uh, uh, we also have, you know, uh, Sanjay Vatwani, sir, out here. Uh, Sanjay, sir, would like to ask you a question live, or uh, shall I just read it out? Uh, uh, Sanjay, sir. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, wonderful uh, points raised by, uh, shared by all the panelists, and uh, I really agree with them in totality. I had an issue or a, uh, more of a statement that now that with social media coming up in such a large way, do we not have to redefine the roles of the chapter? Of course, uh, doctor answered it and said that boundaries have no roles in today's world. I agree yes. with you, sir. But then uh, we need to have a structure in place which allows chapters to function without the boundary. I would like uh, the views of the panelists on that. Thank you. Uh, Balian, sir? Yes, sir. Well, I think uh, what Sanjay is asking is that um, chapters by and large have, of course, a larger domain of activities uh, uh, and responsibilities defined. Uh, and they also at the same time have flexibility of all kinds of activities like a national body to undertake in their, uh, in their uh, geographical area. So there is no um, kind of a restriction of not undertaking any kind of a conference or, or discussion or meeting or pursuing some work that they have all the freedom on that. And they all share today with other chapters as well. And when it comes to, for example, a, a, a holding a national conference, for example, uh, once the national, uh, the, the, the place is decided, the chapter there actually plays the most important role. Their team actually does that. So they have, while they have flexibilities to really work on their own agenda, they have a good relationship with the central uh, body on national perspective, national issues, national programs, and also share with the, some of the other. I, I know NIPM, some of the chapters have a, a, a course being run for years, and they run it very efficiently. So I think there is, uh, to my mind, uh, social media has only helped us to uh, disseminate information and also to engage others. So I think that's the opportunity, to my mind, with the chapters to really take advantage of that. Mitra sahab ne haat utha rakha kya? Nahi. Mitra sahab, you are there. Would like to ask. Yes, I think Sanjay sir is saying something. Yes, Sanjay sir. Mitra sir, welcome. Yes. Uh, any yes, suggestion yeah. you? from the National Vice President? Uh, thank you, Bob Singh sir. Uh, Mr. National President, uh, respected our seniors, uh, uh, uh congratulations to Mr. Mukesh Jain and his team for the first webinar they could organize that with all such tall words. Yes, in case there are plethora of suggestions and, uh, and if you look at the suggestions, it could be uh, classified under two, three heads. One is collaboration that is industry and uh, uh, academia, because, you know, we have to, if you look at the membership drive or anything for that purpose. We have to catch them young, the academia. In fact, 
NIPM should work as an enabler uh, to organize, you know, the the uh, project work or for that uh, placement or something like that. Similarly, as very rightly pointed out by Mr. Uh, Dr. Akhil, that you know we have a large resource pool. So I remember that you know at one point of time, Mr. R. P. Singh was seriously considering that you know extending consultancy services to industry because industry also look for some kind of support from such professional platform. And second, yes, the collaboration with the uh, uh, the other uh, professional platforms, not limited to only HR platforms, but beyond it, the, as rightly pointed out by Mr. Dr. Rakin, that uh, be it scope, be it CII, be it PIKI, be it uh, IMA. So to create a synergy and to take it forward. My limited view of uh, having associated with NIPM since 1981, that NIPM probably unlike other platforms, you know, expect the honorary members to step into the role of the execution. And that is that's not possible. And NIPM never uh, considered to have professional you know, executive officers to carry out his professional activities. And I agree with Dr. Akhil that, you know, uh, now we have been listening and we have been talking about that there has been a transformational change that has taken place in HR over the passage of time. And therefore the platform also has to keep pace with that kind of change. And that change should not be an incremental change. We need to really have, you know, think about doing some, you know, the fundamental change and for which probably it is not the chapter, but the national body has to work on it. And uh, I'm thankful to the, you know, the uh, senior member, Dr. Johari Lal, Dr. Balian, Mr. R. P. Singh, Dr. Akil and Dr. Darkanath uh, to, you know, take interest in NAPM activities. Yes, uh, we are the new body would love to, you know, uh, take more and more suggestions uh, from you and we'll try and do something uh, so as to, you know, uh, make an IPM very, you know, the friendly for the, the members and uh, because people would love to associate with platform when they find this platform a meaningful association. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Arpishi. Thank you, thank you. So I think, uh, do we still have some time or? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, uh, are there any questions from the audience? Uh, uh, we have SP Vansal sir from uh, Punjab chapter. Uh, hmm? uh, I'm Verma, I'm Ayin Verma. I'm a former city director of NTPC HR. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Please, please go ahead, sir. Welcome, so uh, my 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 question to uh, the the uh, 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 Mr. Dwarkanath uh, would be: See the uh, the evolution of HR in various organizations have been at different stages in the country, and uh, uh, I was just wondering uh, uh, the kind of uh, evolution that has taken place in finance functions. To, for example, is it the same in uh, HR domain? I think it is not. So can NIPM uh, be the enabler? to provide uh, some kind of prescription to the organizations to have uh, the uh, structured HR format, I mean, interventions and uh, guidance to the organizations. See, uh, now uh, the concept of the uh, performance management system is emerging. When I talk to various organizations, there are different stages of implementation. See, uh, the, the kind of uh, online feedback, the monthly feedback and the, uh, the systems like that, they are not being implemented uniformly in uh, various organizations. Similarly, uh, the uh, labor codes are going to be implemented across the country. It's, it's a huge task. So can NIPM be enabler or can, be, uh, can it provide direction to the organizations to uh, 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 give some kind of professional advice to these organizations so that the importance and the relevance of the uh, NIPM uh, is increased in the eyes of uh, the stakeholders? The second question is uh, the, the, the very nomenclature, the National Institute of Personal Management. Uh, over the years, we have seen that the personal management function has been renamed as HR. So 
so uh, do we uh, still carry out with the nomenclature of nipm or is there any merit in having a different kind of nomenclature these are the two questions uh, thank you thank you varma ji uh, mr singh can i just go ahead ah, yeah. 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 yeah thank you for raising the questions first let me take the second question which is the most <laughs> easiest question for me a uh, title is not important it is the substance and delivery are more important okay and the problem with hr is if i can say it, um, no offense meant to anybody we are very we are always feel that we may not survive so let us do some rebranding rejigging so we started with ir welfare or personal management or hr or human capital human resources and so on and titles also keep changing chief people officer chief human resource officer what not i think we should not worry about the titles ultimately we should more worry about the substance and delivery and quality of delivery that is my question on the second one coming on the first one uh, without getting into too much of debate sir you know finance is evolved function hr is evolving function if, you know if you ask me after post pandemic i would say hr is equally evolved function the difference between hr and finance according to me is without any bias i am talking as a board member as a chairman of a company i would say finance is more structured more statutory compliance oriented whereas hr is more open and not very much regulated and finance is a kmp because of the accounting issues and so on whereas hr is not it i have been suggesting to the company board please include hr heads as a kmps of the organization they should be made accountable i think this is the need of the hour where iipm or nhrd have to focus on this focus on big things which can bring dignity and also feel perception uh, as a great function in my view today hr is all pervasive it is there everywhere supply chain strategic see what pandemic has brought how much the role of hr has changed and you know how important is it hr so it is not i am trying to sell the hr profession it has evolved still if has to be really recognized like a finance it is important we need to have a robust processes quality of hr leaders have to be audited filtered like a chartered accountants have because there is a sort of a chapa given ultimately which makes them feel more authentic that authenticity in terms of quality and delivery has to be done this is my top line views if you want to talk anything further we can talk offline thank you thank you yes, thank you uh, thank you thank you sir uh, uh, sir we will take just one last question and uh, then we'll proceed ahead with the session so with uh, arpit singh sir kind function like to go ahead uh, yeah, the question is uh, from manoj kumar ji uh, he is uh, saying that technological changes are rapidly happening in today's scenario how we can cope with the organization and people as a hr professional so anyone in the panel uh, uh, can take the question sir thank sir Uh, Balen sir would like to take the question. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, today, all practically all HR processes are on uh, are driven by technology, and and more and more organizations are really uh, using the technology, whether it is really um, employee performance, right from engagement, performance evaluation. Um, or incentive payout or whether it is compensation or evaluation its potential even development uh, 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 initiatives so i think it's it's uh, 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 very important uh, also that you can use technology at one go for large number of employees even at different uh, places of their work uh, they need not really leave that uh, uh 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 office or their work to really undergo a training or development uh, initiative so i think in a in a big way technology is being used today uh by all organizations small or big and i think it's a very welcome sign uh in the 
last one and a half years where the, the, the work from home was a, was a preferred way of working. Companies are now looking at how do you use technology and data to evaluate a person who has worked from home, which is different than what it used to be in a, in a physically present in an office. So I think it is still evolving right now, technology in different uh, uh, conditions, circumstances, but it's a very welcome thing that technology is finding um, not only in the uh, development initiatives, even for predictive um, uh, aspects, uh, what changes are going to be in future, even those preferences of the customers uh, so that the organizations can really become more uh, ready to, to, to address the needs and aspirations of the customers. In all aspects, uh, the artificial intelligence and all those things are finding it uh, a very good application technology and organizations are really making use of it all round. And it's a very welcome sign. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Akil, Akil, you are mute. The RP, uh, yeah. since you asked about uh, these abrupt changes and it caught your attention, and yes. we talked about collaboration between different uh, HR bodies, I, I thought I'll offer some instant uh, coffee-like solution, <laughs> a two-minute noodle. Uh, yes. One, immediately, we should be starting talking to organizations like NHRDN, ISTD, etc. And all of us are somewhere or the other connected to those bodies and collaborate to have two mega events in a year. One okay. for CEO and union leaders, real mm -hmm. CEOs and real union leaders, very mm -hmm. high level, organized, designed by the combination of HRD network with other two bodies or three bodies. Yes. Designed by them, designed by them and resources by those people. Combined, it's not an IPM show, it's not an HRD network show but a combined show to bring our heads together. And it will this collaboration between the organizations will break barriers. Second should be for, for the question that some, uh, was raised that with the younger generation, their aspirations and completely focus on younger generation. So yep. Dr. Kulkani, if you can have a strategy that we will collaborate, we start talking to HRD network, ISCD, et cetera. Can we do these two programs together with everybody uh, or the organization. Second one is immediate. We should talk to people like HRD Network and ISCD and agree to give 25% discount to each other, our members, on all their programs and our programs. This is immediate. Um, that's, if you that's... attend ISCD program, you'll get 25% discount. If the ISCD member attend our program, we'll give 25% discount. The yeah. idea is not money saving. Idea is of showing that we are collaborating. The two yes. mega events I'm mentioning, RP, would yes. have tremendous impact on a galvanizing an IPM. I think that's uh, Mr. Kulkarni yes. will be wonderful. Yes, yes, sir. Very good suggestion, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And 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 Dr. Kulkarni, we will we will there to help you. I mean, you know, all of us are associated with other bodies like that, and it will be a privilege and a pleasure to help. It will not be big task to make people agree. I don't think other organizations have a different view. Surely they will all agree and uh, collaborate. It will be good, good contribution to industry, to the profession, and particularly in the context of revitalizing uh, an, an IPM today. I think it would be a good moment for us to showcase that we are back in the game. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I think Dwarka also has something to say on this. Yes, I very quickly, I mean, since you said the, what is the key message, I don't want to repeat. Firstly, for me, I don't want to be prescriptive. I wanted to leave it to the teams to decide how they want to go ahead. We can only give ideas and sessions. I think first, I suggest even at the <laughs> national level, Ms. Kulkani, you need to take a feedback, a quick dipstick feedback, what they feel about it, what are the areas of improvement, you can structure it. I don't want to be prescriptive. And they do it similarly chapters. Then create a think tank and let them think about three or four. As Akil said, one, bring a transformation change. You need to bring a quick win. It is not the two years or five years. It's what is it in next three months or six months, you can bring some changes. I leave how you can do the quick wins, whether collaboration or concessions, whatever it is, you go ahead. And third one, which I will say is try to get 
involved. You know, these relationships, I think if I have to ask you more than HR or marketing, anyone, the best network profession in India today is HR. I think, you know, it goes without saying. Absolutely. We, Absolutely. we should leverage on it and leverage on it and try to see not confined to one of the, one of the, one of the comments given by business leaders or chambers of commerce and they say, we are very, very, very uh, isolated in working in silos. We need to expand it and do that, which are the cost of reputation. And then involvement of diversity. I mean, bring diversity. It is not only young people, but different ages, different thought process, but keep the senior citizens leaders for the coaching, mentoring, not <laughs> only chapters, other chapters which need some support. Delhi chapter may not need a support resources, but some other chapters, if you are saying 50 chapters, I don't think everybody has got as good as resources unless you marshal them and guide them. These are my top line four comments. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I think uh, we are left with only three minutes. So I'll quickly yeah. sum uh, I got disconnected for a few moments. So I don't know what Dwarka spoke about the renaming of the institution. I had an idea that if we don't want to change the word NIPM, we can still change the name to National Institute of People Management. And it can be NIPM. I don't know uh, how far that is going to be taken uh, in the spirit, but that is one. Now coming back to the learnings or the essence of the learnings that we had today, very fruitful, very thought provoking, and a lot of experience sharing. We had the stalwarts before us. So for time to come, what steps that we need to take is do a SWOT analysis, create a think tank, form different task forces for different types of assignments, develop a very strong and robust process and organization structure, have a professional secretariat, not the secretariat of the kind that we have today. You have one or two young professionals, really competent professionals hired and put them into the secretariat and make it a very robust uh, procedure. Empower chapters, I think that already we have empowered, there is no problem. But yes, wherever the chapters are weak, we need to handhold and also strengthen them. Uh, disruptive actions like certain abrupt changes as suggested by Akil would be very good for changing the perception and of course, collaboration is the essence of any successful organization and we must do it. Another very valuable suggestion is that you take a dipstick, you take the views of all the members and not even members. You have a 360 degree feedback. You can take the views of academicians, industry, all other stakeholders, even trade unions. And this is a very good idea that we should have a conference where we should invite the trade unions also as participants, apart from the leading professionals and CEOs and all that. Uh, and, and that should be in collaboration with the uh, other national organizations in the field. Research and development is an area where we have to have some time and money invested because the way things are changing, the way the technology is changing, the way you have to implement artificial intelligence and other technological changes in the governance of NPM or in enriching your members, providing them services and valuable uh, ideas, I think you have to have an R&D cell within your organization. And of course, this new labor code is coming as a great opportunity to us. 
So we should not let this go, this opportunity go. We should immediately catch hold of this opportunity and we should develop a capability and we should use it as a brand building image because we have all the expertise. This is an area where even the old boys can be of great assistance to you. <laughs> <laughs> and we can really capture the you know, audience. We can really capture the constituency and we can do great things. Uh, I mean, we can go on discussing and discussing, but the essence of all this is that we have to start acting immediately. This is the learning of today for me. And I hope there were several other takeaways. We have the younger blood. We have Dr. Goenka, who is an academician as senior vice president or vice president of the Delhi chapter. So he will take note of this. He will interact with the academicians and perhaps the collaboration will increase. Thank you very much. All the best. RP, one, one request, RP. Yes. Is, is it, if, uh, can you share the last part of your learning? Yes. Uh, I, would, I would be very happy to go to the president of HRD Network sure, and sure. share with him so he can also learn from something like this and uh, improve on that area. Thank you. Well, that, of course, surely we will. Uh, so, so thank you so much. Uh, so give a big, uh, big, uh, big uh, round of applause to our wonderful <laughs> panelists and uh, moderator for a very, very powerful session. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, it is amazing to see the uh, the depth and of the knowledge and the wisdom you know of uh, all the eminent leaders. Um, and beautifully moderated by our uh, R.P. Singh, sir. I thank Dr. Akhil Busrai, sir, uh, uh, Dwarkanath, sir, Ashok Balyan, sir, and Joy Lal, sir, uh, for a great, great uh, deliberation, rematching the future of NIPM. I'm sure the audience has, uh, 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 you know, have had a lot of you know, takeaways, you know, rematching the future. Uh, and I think, you know, it's, it's a truly a, a right time because, you know, uh, looking at the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, changes which have occurred, right, uh, in the past. So the future of work, you know, how it is evolving is really going to create a very uh, different kind of, you know, uh, I think leadership, you know, which, is, which will be required. Diversity, inclusion, equity and belongingness is something, you know, I think we really need to focus upon and uh, without the diversity, inclusion and equity and belongingness. Uh, there cannot be any innovation. And I think that's where the young, uh, you know, uh, blood really comes into picture. Uh, uh, and the digital transformation, you know, which is there. Uh, so we, as a body, has to, you know, uh, leverage upon the digital transformation to create that wonderful, you know, engagement and experience at the national level, not just for the body, but also for the fraternity and people at large. Uh, so with these words uh, and... Uh, uh, I would like to now, you know, go to the last uh, leg of the session and uh, kindly invite uh, our respected, you know, our, uh, vice chairman of uh, the uh, Delhi NCR chapter of an IPM, Dr. Shankar Goenka, sir, uh, who is an author, international speaker, motivational speaker, and MD of War Factors India. So, thank you so much, sir, for uh, being here. Uh, May I request you now to you know kindly propose a word of thanks over to you, sir. Thank you very thank much, you. sir. Thank you, thank you so very much, sir. Main sir, bachpan se sunta ya ki every great leader is a good storyteller, and I am so privileged to hear so many good stories from everyone. Or mera to ye strongly manna ki khushiyan to takdeer mein honi chahiye. Tasviron mein har koi muskurata hai. And when I was seeing this NIPM NIPM poster, and I could see everyone has a great smile. While you know on this, so thank you very much. My sincere thank to Kulkarni sir. My great thank to my guru and my mentor uh, RP Singh sir. Uh, my thanks to Mukesh Jain sir, chairman, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, and you know I want to thank Mr. Raja, uh, Mr. Sanjay Vadwani sir, Mr. Reddy sir from Chennai, and Mr. Narendran from Udaipur ji, Mr. Maheshwari ji from Calcutta, Professor Rao from Vaisak, Mr. S P Bansal sir. From Chandigarh, Jauri Lal Sir, so nice to know you, Sir. A.K. Balyan Sir, so great to see you after such a long time, Sir. Dwarka Nath Sir, great to hear you, Sir. Dr. Akil Sir, I am so, so very impressed to hear you, Sir. Thank you so very much for giving us such a great point. And, you know, we have so much to learn. 
and this is my first time you know with an ipm team and whatever i could learn it was so jaise aapne kaha sir ki hum jab padhte the aur bahar aaye to hamare liye ek role model tha and i believe it's so much of matlab if you ask me personally i have so much of learning out of out of this and it gave me so much of energy and a road map how i can take it take it to next level so thank you very much sir from the team of uh, nip uh, from the team of nipm from their side i can only tell you one thing sir ki <clears throat> karm bhumi ki is duniya mein shram sabhi ko karna padta hai upar wala sirf lakire deta hai rang hame hi bharna padta hai so with all your blessings we will make sure sir we will take it we will try and take it to next level and we will inculcate with all your experience thank you sir thank you so much audience thank you so much all great panelists thank you so much guru ji for being here and thank you so very much namaste and god bless you thank you sir thank you thank, thank you, you dr goenka thank you yashwan thank you alok thank you very much thank you to all my colleagues from uh, nipm delhi ncr chapter mr sani is here many more senior people mr uh, uh, call is here mr madan is here so many mr adil is here so i thank you thank you appreciate your um, uh, time and uh, you know active participation thank you very much sir thank you thank you for inviting us thank you thank you, you, thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you and i'm and sure we'll <laughs> we'll get your blessings continuously for for uh, at least one or two more years so that you know we will be learn will learn and uh, you know practice uh, Uh, in sure. nipm <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you so much thank you so much everyone hello ji thank